In our last episode, we explored how CRISPR revolutionized genetic science and won its creators Doudner and Charpentier a Nobel Prize. But just as scientists were celebrating its potential, one researcher took it further than anyone expected, creating the first gene-edited humans. What should have been a historic moment became a global scandal, secret experiment, international outrage, a scientist arrested, the world was no longer asking if CRISPR could change humanity, but whether it already had. Hi, I'm Ko, and this is the story of the CRISPR babies, one of the most controversial moments in modern science, a moment where ambition collided with ethics, blurring the lines between groundbreaking discovery and global scandal. In 2018, Dr. Ha Jiankui, a Chinese scientist, made a shocking announcement. Twin girls Lulu and Nana had been born with edited genomes. His goal? To make them resistant to HIV by disabling a gene called CCR5, which the virus uses to enter human cells. On paper, it seemed like a noble mission, protecting children from a life-threatening disease. But instead of being hailed as a medical pioneer, Ha Jiankui became the face of one of the biggest scientific scandals of the century. So here's the thing, CRISPR wasn't ready for this, at least not for editing human embryos in a way that would permanently alter the genetic code passed down to future generations. The scientific community had been debating the ethics of germline editing for years because the risks were enormous. Even the smallest off-target mutation could have unintended consequences causing new diseases, altering cognitive functions, or triggering mutations that wouldn't reveal themselves for generations. But Ha Jianghui went ahead anyway. His experiment was conducted in secret without proper oversight and in direct violation of international scientific guidelines. The editing process wasn't flawless. There were concerns that the gene edits could have introduced unintended mutations or mosaicism, a condition where only some cells carry the intended changes while others do not. Worse still, because these edits were made at the embryonic stage, they were heritable, meaning any future children Lulu and Nana might have would carry these changes. At first, he was proud of his work. He presented it at the second international summit on human genome editing in Hong Kong, expecting recognition. Instead, the backlash was swift and brutal. Leading scientists condemned the experiment not just for its recklessness, but for its ethical violations. He had crossed a line that many believed should remain untouched. The Chinese government quickly launched an investigation. It didn't take long to uncover that he had forged ethical approval documents and kept much of his research hidden, even from his own institution. Within weeks, he vanished from the public view, only to resurface months later when he was sentenced to three years in prison for violating medical regulations. The fallout was massive. Scientists around the world were forced to confront the uncomfortable truth that while CRISPR was powerful, it was also dangerously accessible. The very thing that made it revolutionary, that is, its simplicity and affordability, is also what made it susceptible to misuse. Ha Jiankui wasn't some rogue genius with access to secret technology. He used the same CRISPR tools available to thousands of labs worldwide. But perhaps the most haunting part of this story to this day, the world knows almost nothing about Lulu and Nana. Their identities, their health status, their futures all remain closely guarded secrets. Are they healthy? Did the edits work as intended? Or are there hidden complications waiting to surface? No one outside a small circle of officials knows for sure. Some fear they could suffer from unforeseen genetic issues, while others worry they will be treated as anomalies rather than ordinary children. Despite the scandal, CRISPR didn't stop advancing. 
scientists continue to exploit potential in medicine, using it to develop groundbreaking treatments for diseases like sickle cell anemia, beta thalassemia, and certain cancers. In 2020, for the first time, CRISPR was successfully used in vivo directly inside a living human body to treat a rare genetic disorder causing blindness. These successes reinforced CRISPR's promise, but the shadow of the CRISPR babies lingered. The scandal sparked global debates about where to draw the line in gene editing. Should we only edit genes to treat or prevent life-threatening diseases? Or is human enhancement inevitable? Imagine a world where parents can select their child's intelligence, athleticism, or even personality traits. Will this lead to a world of designer babies where only the wealthy could afford genetic perfection, deepening social inequalities? And then there's the broader ecological question. If we have the power to edit genes, should we use it to alter entire species? Some scientists are already using CRISPR for gene drives to eliminate disease-carrying mosquitoes, potentially eradicating malaria. But what happens if these changes spread in unintended ways? Could we disrupt entire ecosystems without realizing it? The CRISPR babies were in the end of the debate, they were just the beginning. In the years since the scandal, some countries have doubled down on banning germline editing while others are cautiously exploring its possibilities under strict regulations. International summits have called for stronger oversight, global ethical standards, and more transparent scientific practices. Yet, the technology keeps evolving, often faster than the laws designed to control it. Can regulation keep pace with innovation? The CRISPR babies force the world to confront the darker side of gene editing. Not just the rhetorical question of, can we, but the controversial question, should we? Science has given humanity the power to shape its own evolution, but at what cost? At least for Ha Jiankui, the cost was his career, his freedom, and his reputation. For Lulu and Nana, the cost is still unknown. One thing is certain, CRISPR has forever changed the course of human history. We're standing at the edge of something monumental, a tool that could end genetic diseases or push us into a world of engineered perfection. The future is in our hands, but so is the responsibility. As we move forward, the question isn't just how we use CRISPR, but whether we can handle the consequences. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Double Helix, coded to reality.